Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, uh, both here in the building and those of you at home. Um, glad to have everybody together as much as we can be. Uh, worship today is as normal. Uh, follow along on the screen. Uh, this is our uh, the last day of the sermon series, so um, we'll be singing the entire song uh, this week, so be ready for that. We're actually going to sing it in two areas. We're not singing it all at once, just because. So just follow the screen. Anyway, uh, do we have any updates um, or additions to our prayer list? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we'll pray, add uh, prayers for Artie um, as he's been diagnosed with throat cancer. Um, and for David, and, uh, who suffered a heart attack while surfing in his hospital. Um, prayer his continued recovery. Any others? Nancy. The cycling. Okay, prayers for the cycling family. Um, you said Eric was, Eric um, was, how did, I didn't hear it quite what he, it was in an auto accident, it was in an auto accident and did not survive, so. Eric Cyclin and his family uh, in particular. Yes. Okay, so Jamie and her Summers and her family as they've decided for her to go into hospice. Okay, yep. Okay, the McDowell family who lost their mom uh, yesterday. Keep prayers for that. Any? Yes, Dale. Oh, your granddaughter Kristen who had a heart attack. Jeez. Right? Wow, okay, prayers for her as well. Any others? Oh, yes. What's the dance name? Uh, Jill's Aunt Janet um, died yesterday, so prayers for um, the extended family uh, on the loss of her. Any others? Okay. Uh, prepare ourselves for worship.
test. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? the humility of your Son, that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
seated for the readings. The first lesson comes from Hebrews chapter 13. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves are being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say in confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place, and then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Seeing no children, would you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you give to us. We give you thanks for our histories and for our families and for the lessons that you have taught us. We give you thanks for our future and future descendants and the continued gifts that you give us. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit among us now. Open our hearts and our minds. Bless the words of my mouth that they carry to your people an understanding of your call to humility, sacrifice, and service. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
been bouncing around with this sermon because there are about four sermons in my head, so it might seem a little disjointed, but I'm going to try not to do all four. Humility. Humility is something that Jesus teaches today in our lesson. It's, uh, it's an obvious one. This is probably a lesson you've heard, a parable you've heard about um, someone giving a banquet. And, and when you go to the wedding feast, take a lower seat so that you can be exalted. Don't assume. What he's saying in there is don't assume that you get the best place. In fact, make it not about you at all. Although it gets a little iffy there when he starts saying, do this so that you can look better. It's more about, don't make it about you. Make it about the host. Make it about the other guests. He goes on to tell his host, when you have a luncheon, when you have a banquet, don't invite the people that can pay you back. Don't invite the ones that are going to bring the nice gifts, the hostess gifts and whatever. Does anybody even do that anymore, hostess gifts? But invite the people that don't, that can't, that the people that just need the food, the people that need the fellowship, the people that are in need. Make it about them, not you. That's the heart of humility. Testing. Testing. Many of you may remember me telling you um, when I decided to go to seminary and become a pastor uh, my senior year in college, I had already talked to uh, my pastor and had kind of gone through some things and knew what direction I was going to. And honestly, it was difficult in my mind to tell my parents. And so I sat down um, with, my, with both parents, which didn't happen very often, and I told them. I said, I'm, I think I'm going to go to seminary. Um, I, I feel God's calling me to the ministry. And my mother's very first words were, well, you'll have to find some humility. Thanks, Mom. Way for the just supportive, yay, cheering squad. She wasn't wrong. My response was, what do you mean? Look at the pastors we know. They don't have any humility. Just true. I mean, not true. They all had humility. There's a difference between confidence and arrogance. Confidence, if you're not looking at it right, it looks like arrogance and then seems like it's humility. It's not humility. We had pastors that were very well educated, that really understood what they were doing. We had, I, I grew up with pastors that were constantly challenging us to something new, something different. And seldom, if ever, were we berated for not doing what they thought. It's, it's part of the way I learned to preach, to preach from the gospel, not the law, to preach from um, God loves you, period. And then the humility is, this is what you can do because God loves you. And you know what? If you don't do it, God still loves you why I've become um, very much, I think the law is important. It points us in the right direction. That's what Martin Luther said. It points us in the right direction. It shows us our need for Christ. We can't, we can't do it all without, without Jesus. And, and the law shows us that. It shows us that we get stuck in our own wants and desires, which, as you've heard me say, is really the essence of original sin trying to make ourselves better than we are, trying to get what we want for ourselves and raise ourselves up to be like God, not because God says, be more like me, but because we are looking for the power in ourselves. That selfishness is what is not humility. When we put ourselves first, and Jesus is very clear. Don't put yourselves first. Make it about the other. Even our uh, first lesson today begins with let mutual love continue. Continue love in with other people. Let it happen. Don't 
don't get in there and mess it up. Don't get in there and, and turn things around. But, but allow love to happen between people. Mutual love. And it goes on and on about all the things. Now, it, you have to be a little careful with that passage because you can get very moralistic. You can take these words of this is what it looks like when you follow Jesus. This is what it looks like when you are a Christian and you put Jesus and others first because Jesus put others first. You can take that and make it a little too, you have to do this. It can become too legalistic. And when we do that, it, we lose the essence of what we're hearing. Put others first. And putting others first means sacrifice. Putting others first means, by definition, that we sacrifice our own wants and needs for the other. That is the example that Jesus gave in everything he did. That is the example that Jesus created by hanging on the cross for you. He put you first before Him. Even as He knelt in the garden before He was arrested and prayed to God, take this cup away, we hear that He didn't want to do it. He didn't want to be hung on a cross. He didn't want to be ridiculed and beaten and spit at and tortured. He didn't want to do any of that. And he said, please, God, find another way. But ultimately, he saw that this was the way. This was the only thing. And his sacrifice for you sets you an example. And his sacrifice for you sets you and me free. Free to go and do what God calls us to do, to let mutual love continue, to hold up others and to make things about the other, not us, because we're covered. You're covered. Jesus died for you. And that frees you. You don't have to, you don't have to find a way to get into heaven. You don't have to find a way to live eternally with God. You don't have to find a way to be in, uh, to get a favored glance from God because He did it for you. You can let that go. And as we live on this earth, we, we have to remind ourselves that it's about taking the lower place it's about inviting the ones that can't help back. We do a pretty good job of that. The food pantry is, of course, our strongest ministry right now. It is about being and giving to those who need, those others, making them first. It can get a little trickier as we get things closer to home. As we look at, and this is the last of the sermon series where we look at the song, We Are the Church, and we as a shrinking congregation, at least in our current shape, recognize that we have very little time left in this building. We have made the decision because it's what we have to do to change our ministry. And when people first heard about it, they had emotional reactions. Some of you may have had emotional reactions. Pretty much everybody had emotional reactions. And there's hurt and there's pain in there and there's loss. And it's, it's, it's a, a, a mourning that we have to go through. But God tells us very clearly in today's lessons that God is with us. And in our sacrifice, God is there. So that means look at the next steps. That means don't look at it as how you want it. Check those initial reactions, those absolutes that came to mind. I'm never going to worship not in a church, and every one of us has thought that. I'm not 
pulling anyone out. That's, that's, not, that's not a thing. You have worshiped not in a church, and you can do it again if it's what's best for God's word in this place. I'm only going to go at this time or that time. I'm not going unless this happens or that happens. When we get those absolutes, we are holding ourselves higher than the other. So as we go forward, as we remember that we are the living church of God, we are part of the body, each one of us and us collectively, we have to remember the other. Because Jesus freed you so that you can. Jesus freed you so that his message, his love, his gospel, the good news, can get to you wherever you are. Whether that means worshiping in another church's space, or joining another congregation, or worshiping in a warehouse or a storefront, because it's what will work best for God's word. Being humble, putting the other first, is about making that sacrifice of what we hold so dear in many cases. And praying and knowing that God will replace it. Replace it with some new experience, some new way of worship, some new brothers and sisters in Christ, some new and growing and strong living way that his word acts in your world, in your life. Because that's the promise. So we look as we go forward into letting go of what is so important to us. And we trust in that promise from God those who humble themselves will be exalted. Amen. Please rise as you're able. Claim our faith with the whole church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third, third day, day he rose again, he descended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the, Holy the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion, communion of saints, the forgiveness, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, and the life, and the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. For today's prayers of intercession, we will end each petition with merciful God and invite you to respond with, receive our prayer. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. For the church and its leaders, we pray, uphold all deacons, pastors, and bishops who serve and teach your people. Awaken in your church a spirit of invitation that reaches ever outward. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For the well-being of creation and its inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us reverent awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes, rivers and streams, forests and deserts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, we pray. Sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equity for all. Defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees, and all who are persecuted for their ethnic origin or religious beliefs. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, we pray. Be present with those who live in isolation or fear, especially those who are incarcerated or detained. Comfort all who are sick or grieving especially all we serve through Share Food, Share Love Food Pantry, everyone on our congregation's prayer list, and those we name silently or out loud now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For this congregation and its ministries, we pray. Prepare children teachers, and youth ministry directors for a new year of learning. Embolden our witness to invite others to the table. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For all the saints who confessed God's name, we give thanks. May we cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share that peace. You may be seated. Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field. 
and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out your, the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your holy name. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Please be seated. At faith, we believe that all of God's children are welcome to the Lord's table. We offer fresh bread and traditional wafers. When the assistant offers you the wine, please choose red traditional wine from the outer rings of the tray or non-alcoholic white wine from one of the inner rings. You may place your empty cup in the collection tray as you return to your seat. All are welcome to come forward for a blessing instead of the bread and wine. We'll start on the side of the church closest to me, and then continue with the other side. Those of you participating from home may commune yourselves and those around you with the words given and shed for you at this time.
Please rise as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. celebrations or announcements yes sir I've got one it's kind of a weird one um, my industry has uh, experienced a lot of uh, writing's kind of been on the wall since like April and August uh, a couple Wednesdays ago whatever that was it happened uh, so we're all laid off but in a way it's a good thing because I just have this like weight taken from my shoulders and on to the next thing so um, thank God for that opens opportunity for, for new new opportunities so in a weird way this is a personal celebration so okay. praise God for that well and we'll pray for your next steps too. yes definitely uh, need some some prayers for that as well yes Any other personal celebrations? <laughs> or um, Robert and I just got cast in a show, so be ready. Uh, when is the show? Do you know? End of, end of October. It's something rotten. So if you—that's actually the name of it. The show is not rotten. Um, it's a spoof on Shakespeare, sort of. It's Where very fun. It's a very fun show. So we'll let you know more. Uh, it's, it'll be performed at the Des Plaines Fine Arts Building. It's up in Des Plaines. I'll let you know, but yeah. Yes, sir. Let's remember who we are. A community of disciples, disciples embodying body the unconditional the love of Jesus, of Jesus with a firm, firm commitment, commitment to the feeding, feeding of body, body and, soul. and soul. I think we covered all the church announcements too, so let's yeah. sing. Oh, wait, no, wait. We have church announcements I didn't know about. Oh, okay.
Okay, so the Our Daily Bread uh, devotional books are here. Pick them up if you would like those. Did you have another one, Nancy, or were you flagging down for Jill? Okay. Uh, okay, now let's sing. Peace. Love your neighbor. Feed the hungry. Thanks be to God.